Hey ladies, happy Wednesday. Welcome to another Wednesday live training. We are um, going to talk today about, um, it, actually this is part three of getting started with strength training. We're gonna talk about shoes and the best shoes to wear for strength training and why. And we're gonna talk a little bit about proper fueling for, uh, for workouts, so before and for after your workouts. So those are our topics for today. This is a continuation from parts one and two that you can find if you go into the group, up into the events tab, if you click events, then you should be able to see um, all of the other live trainings that we have done uh, so far. There's quite a few actually. Um, and so go ahead and look through all those. Feel free to check any of those out. I also upload most of these, although I think I am a little bit behind, but most of these live trainings are uploaded onto my YouTube page as well. So if you go to YouTube and you search uh, Math and Macros, you should be able to find it. Uh, I might have that link somewhere too. I don't know. But anyway, if you need it, let me know. I'm happy to share it. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and get rolling here. We're going to start by talking about shoes. So I love shoes. Who doesn't love shoes? We all love shoes. However, when we're looking at getting a pair of shoes specifically for strength training, we want to make sure that we're looking at shoes not as um, the awesome, exciting thing to buy that they are, as if when we're buying shoes maybe to go out or when we're buying shoes um, uh, you know, for work or whatever. We want to look at shoes in the gym as a tool. So we wanna think of it as a tool, just like you would think of if you have like a lifting belt, for example, or um, anything else, straps, anything else. Your shoes are a tool, and which shoes you purchase are going to either make what you're doing in the gym easier or make it harder, as well as making it safer or making yourself more prone to injury. So this is a really important uh, topic that I think not a lot of people fully understand and honestly it's just not something we always necessarily consider when we are um, uh, thinking about uh, buying things for the gym you know sometimes we're thinking about how cute our outfit is or we're thinking about you know whatever the whole thing we all look cute right um, so uh, a lot of times we forget the utility side of the shoe when we're looking at them and thinking about if we like them or if they're going to match what we wear or whatever. So that's what I want to talk mainly about today. And then, like I said, a little bit we'll get into um, fueling for your workouts. And I think today should be a fairly quick live. So, um, so is your shoe the right tool for the job? That's what we want to find out. So number one thing that I want to convey right away and um, uh, just leave no question about is when we are performing strength training, when you're lifting weights or even resistance bands, um, even a lot of body weight type exercises, it is really, really best to not do strength training in squishy shoes. So a lot of times we think, oh, I'm working out. I should get running shoes or I should get comfortable shoes. And yes, we, we want comfort, of course. They should fit you well and feel good. However, when we're strength training and we have that squishy sole, like if you can put your hand in it and push down and it gives, that is not the ideal tool for strength training. So for one thing, the, the main thing really, is that it creates an unstable base. So we're literally, obviously you're standing, right? So your feet, your shoes are your base. When you're lifting weights, you're creating, it's not stable because it's squishy, our feet can kind of move around in there a little bit and it's not totally stable. So think about like um, if you have something, uh, a container and you wanna push down and close the lid on it, if you put that container on your bed and you try to push the lid on it, it's not very easy to close, right? Because the bed is squishy and we're able to push down into it and it can kind of move around. That's what's happening in our shoe. If you take that same container and put it on the floor, on the hard floor, on a table, and we push down on the lid, what happens? That lid closes right away, right? So it's the exact same idea with your foot in your shoe. Your foot in your shoe is like your foot on a bed. When you're, we're lifting, we're having that unstable base and it's pushing into the squishy and it's kind of, we're able to move around a little bit. So not only are you not able to generate as much power and strength in your lifts with that shoe on, 
but you're also leaving yourself open to potential injury because it's unstable and we kind of move around a little bit. So if you um, are lifting in, like I said, like running shoes or even some of the cross trainers, some of the cross trainers are more stable than others, but a lot of them that are designed specifically for running um, or to do any kind of running in are not gonna be the ideal shoe for strength training. So you want a shoe that's very flat and um, is uh, has a really solid base. So I wear Chuck Taylors, like Converse Chuck Taylors, um, because I have a small and somewhat narrow foot. If your foot is a little bit wider and you're not terribly comfortable in Chuck Taylors, you want it, when your foot is in your shoe, you wanna think, can I spread my toes? If you're not able to spread your toes in it, then you're not going to give yourself the best base. So you might wanna look for a shoe with a wider toe box, like uh, the old school classic Vans are a little bit wider. Some people still find those to be a little too narrow. Um, and there are other types of shoes that you can get, like um, Nike Metcons or Nobles. Those are getting uh, much more expensive. The price point on those is much, much higher, especially with Nobles, but a lot of people like them. I personally, just for Chucks, um, I don't have any issues with Chucks. Um, so the key is that flat and solid base. So if you can push in on it and it feels kind of hard in there, that's ideal for strength training. So what if you're going to be strength training, but also you have cardio that day? I just throw an extra pair of shoes in my bag. I throw like running type shoes in my bag. I keep them in there all the time. So when I do cardio, I can switch to those. And when I'm lifting, I can keep on my chucks. So now there are other kinds of shoes that you might see at the gym that are designed for specific lifts, like for squats, for example. So there are certain shoes that have a heel that's raised up. So it might be kind of at an angle, like your toes are down. And then as if you look at it, you can see it's skinny at the toe and then it gets wider at the heel. So those are called, we call those lifters. Um, the a co very common brand of those is Adidas Power Lifts or they call them Addy Powers. Um, those are absolutely not a requirement to do squats. Those are ideal for if you are noticing, um, particularly for competitors, but anyone can wear them, um, but especially competitors, when you squat, we need to be squatting down to a certain point where our hips are below the top of our knee. And if you are squatting and you're struggling to get down to that point, it could potentially be an issue with your ankle mobility. And when we wear those types of shoes with the, um, the heel elevated up a little bit, it creates like an artificial, um, uh, way of increasing your ankle mobility because with your heel up a little bit when we squat down it allows you to squat lower because of the angle that it puts your foot with your ankle so those are great particularly for competitors if you have any issues with ankle mobility now with that said if you are noticing you have issues with ankle mobility the solution is not necessarily uh, just get some lifters and be done with it the solution is to work on your ankle mobility um, however you can um, uh, you can use squat shoes or lifters like Adidas power lifts to help you kind of artificially create that um, situation to where you're able to get depth easier. I used to use lifters and as I improve my ankle mobility, I no longer wear lifters. I wear my chucks to squat in now. So it's again, it's a tool for the job. So it's not something you absolutely have to have to squat. Um, and then there's also things for deadlifts, like deadlift slippers and things like that, that start kind of getting into the weeds a little bit. Um, but the main key for strength training is that you want a flat, solid based shoe, not a squishy shoe like a running shoe for strength training, because um, it limits how much power you can output in your lifts because that cushion is absorbing. And also it creates a situation where you could potentially get injured because it's unstable. So any other questions or thoughts or even shoe recommendations that you might have, go ahead and put those in the comments of this video and I will get to those afterwards. Um, so now let's move on to our final part of this three uh, part series, I guess we could call it, that we've been doing on getting started with strength training and that's our nutrition. I'm gonna keep this part fairly simple. We don't need to get into the weeds with this. We don't need to get super technical with this. It's really um, kind of pretty straightforward and most of the advice um, can apply to most people. Um, so when we're working out, there's things we want to consider. Number one, what time are you working out? If you're an early morning workout person, then you're gonna to wanna to be thinking about your nutrition the night before, before bedtime. 
if you are like me and I y'all I don't do anything early morning I don't even wake up early morning let alone get up and work out so y'all that do it bless you you're amazing I am not one of them um, I'm an afternoon or an evening kind of girl but if you are a morning person you want to think about your nutrition the night before if you're an afternoon evening person like me we're thinking about our nutrition in the few hours leading up to our workout so before the workout we want carbs we want protein namely carbs um, protein is great because we know it's no everybody knows protein is going to help with muscle recovery muscle repair after your workout so the reason pre-workout protein is good is because when you think about um, our protein entering our body and by the time it's actually made bioavailable for our muscle to use it that takes time so if we're eating protein prior to our workout our body is working and making it available to use through the workout so by the time the workout is done la, the protein is there to be used post-workout we also want protein and most people do that and know that and um, that's absolutely yes we want that but if you think about it even if you drink say a protein shake immediately after your workout it's gonna take a couple of hours for it to get through your system for it to be actually made available for your body to use so pre-workout protein is kind of like um, we're sort of like preloading right so we're having the protein and then as our workout is ending that is the protein that's actually available for our body to use in that moment um, carbs are important pre-workout because that's our energy particularly if you are strength training the majority of um, what your body needs and is using in a workout are carbs so glycogen inside of our muscles so we want to make sure that our muscles are filled with that glycogen so that our body can use it when we have depleted all of the glycogen in our body or not all but most of the glycogen in our muscles in our body that's when we start feeling that fatigue you get that shaky feeling um, you're not as strong because you've used up all of your glycogen. So you wanna make sure you've got carbs pre-workout, protein pre-workout. After workout, like I said, you want protein, but you also want carbs again after the workout. So remember, we have talked in the past, if you've seen other trainings that I have um, done, we talk about how exercise is a stressor on our body. Even if we feel like mentally, this is what I use to release my stress, inside, physiologically, exercise is a stressor stressors increase our cortisol levels cortisol levels that are increased and um, don't get uh, managed that creates our belly fat so remember we've talked about all that before so we're exercising we have increased our cortisol because it's a stressor and that's super normal that's not a bad thing we don't want to stop that that's something that should be happening however we want to cut that off as soon as our workout has ended when the cortisol continues it's also catabolic it eats our muscle it uses up our muscle so um and it breaks it down we don't want it we just got done strength training we don't want our muscle broken down we want to build it up right so we want to cut off that cortisol response with carbs as quickly as you can after your workout um so we want to so carbs always blunt the cortisol response so we want to stop that like 20 25 carbs usually will do it if you have more in your daily macros go for it um if not about 20 or 25 ought to do the trick and then the same with protein about 20 25 protein works so you can do things like um uh i like to do um what's it called cottage cheese cottage cheese with applesauce or with fruit in it for some carbs and then maybe like you know crackers or something like that <clears throat> excuse me my husband does a mixture of uh frozen berries with a little bit of fair life milk and protein powder and he mixes it and eats it um, so it's again all the carbs and stuff from the berries and then your protein fats we want to try to keep away from our workouts we don't really want fats close to before our workout or close to right after our workout we definitely should be eating fats at all other parts of our day particularly the healthy ones that you're getting from avocados and nuts and seeds and whatnot but we don't want that close to our workout because carb uh, I'm not sorry not carbs uh, fat is super um, takes a very long time to digest it's super slow at digesting and particularly when we're working out we don't want our body working to try to digest fats we want our body working to fuel our workouts so we want to try to keep fats away from our workouts as much as we can but we definitely want to make sure we're getting our fats in in other parts of the day okay so carbs protein pre-workout carbs protein post-workout fats Keep it on the other sides keep keep it in other parts of your day besides your workout okay 
Um, so yeah, let me check my notes here, but I feel like that, that pretty much wraps it up. Remember, if you're a morning workout person, you're thinking about your carbs and your protein before bed. Um, eating something pre-workout too, even if you're a morning person, eating something light, if your stomach can handle it, is um, ideal just because blood sugar, but as well as that glycogen thing, like if it's like a banana, uh, some yogurt, something like that. Um, and then when before your workout you eat is really up to you. It, it depends on um, how basically your stomach handles it. Some people need to keep it like two to three hours pre-workout. I literally will eat on the deadlift platform <laughs> while I'm warming up. I'll be eating yogurt and pretzels. People see me do it all the time. Um, literally as I'm warming up, I it doesn't bother me at all. I don't have any issues with eating right before I work out. So it's really just up to you and what works for you. Um, but um, yeah, but it's, it is absolutely best to work out with food. You are going to get a better workout. There are lots of people that might work out fasted if that's what works for them, that's what works. However, the majority of people will get a better workout. They will feel stronger. They'll be able to push harder and push for longer if we have fuel in our body. So any questions, comments, thoughts that you have about shoes or about nutrition pre and post workout, go ahead and put those down in the comments below. I am always looking for suggestions or topics that you would like to see me do a live training on. Um, so if you have any uh, thoughts or ideas or um, anything at all, please put that stuff in the comments because uh, sometimes it gets very difficult to figure out what I, what I should talk about. So I would love to hear your thoughts and your questions and comments um, down below. Next week I have an Ask Me Anything session, um, so please ask me anything and I will add that in. Uh, we will do Ask Me Anything once a month and next week is our uh, week for June. So. I hope you all have an awesome rest of your week. I would love to hear your thoughts, questions, comments, concerns. Go ahead and post those. This week's hashtag is hashtag ready. You are telling me all about things that you do to prepare yourself for success every day. Laying out your clothes, filling up your bottles, meal prepping, all those things that you do so that you are set up for success in low stress. Have a great week. I will talk to you all on Friday when I announce the winner for Hashtag Ready.